Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you find yourself. Fudge Dice Roll here, and we are back on the farm in Iowa Plains. Uh, it is it is harvest season, guys. It is harvest season for wheat. Our wheat is nice and great. And what we actually what are we doing here at the dealership? Uh, well, we actually swapped out our bale uh, our bale trailer for this bale semi trailer trailer <laughs> we we took that uh we swapped this out this thing is nice uh actually we ended up uh picking this up for roughly the same price i think uh we actually made a thousand dollars on trade-in uh this brand new for the same price of our used bail trailer uh this is just nice i i wanted to kind of start getting a few more things that we could use with our uh truck here and so this was one of those things i wanted to get this and let's go ahead and make our way back to the farm so our wheat field is ready to harvest the wheat is looking good uh the grain is looking nice and dry i'm gonna have to wait a little bit longer on the moisture um but another thing that we have going on on the farm is that we have ourselves a big harvest of eggs that need to get run in eggs need to get run in i think that we also have somewhere around uh i want to say like 25 thousand liters of milk i need to schedule another uh another milk pickup but uh, all in all things are looking good our potato crop is cropping in nice and i have an idea guys so we will actually pop out here real quick we'll take a look at that everything is coming in really nicely so we'll kind of come over here look at these this is looking great this is looking lush I'm looking forward to getting that potato harvest done. Uh, we do have some harvest plans. We have some harvest plans. Uh, I might even see about being able to harvest this neighboring field. That would be great. But as you can see, there's our wheat. Our wheat is looking good. We're gonna get a good. Uh, we're gonna get a good haul, I believe, of wheat and straw. And then I'm going to remember this time to reset my uh, my logistical management software so that we can kind of better track and regulate what uh, what what's going on on the fields now i got something pretty crazy in mind guys something something pretty different okay uh i will just kind of how do i want to do i should be able to back this in here i might actually need to move yeah let's move the john deere here let's move the 6155 let's get this out of the way and we have our bucket loader on here. We were loading some manure over into the uh over into our vegetable area into our greenhouses. So that should be good right there. Just want to get that out of the way so we can back this in. We do have something pretty awesome. I have like a, I've devised a plan, if you will, right? <laughs> For getting some optimal use out of the land. And I think this is gonna be pretty cool. If it worked out in my favor, which good, because I have given it some thought and we'll give it a little bit of preparation as well. I'm gonna just back this guy in. I have so much more room. There we are. Hook that, that can sit there. Uh so what what am I talking about? Let's let's get the uh let's get the truck parked. Well, actually, we're going to come down here and hook up to the uh, we're going to come down here and hook up to our tipper trailer or it's actually well, yeah, it's a tipper trailer. still. we're going to come down here and hook up to this uh, to this. Crumpy and get that ready for harvest. As you can see, we already pulled the X9 out and we were doing a little bit of checks and maintenance on that, hitting the grease points, checking the uh, checking the, the, the disc plates and stuff for. Uh, for going out and harvesting the wheat. So I think I can do is we'll just kind of get this uh stationed up here. I'm not quite sure where I'm going to approach the uh I'm not sure where I'm gonna approach this from yet. So we'll do this here. All right, so so check it out, right? So I was looking at my software on my tablet. We can see that wheat is ready to harvest right now. So I can harvest said wheat, and at the same time, I can plant carrots 
this month. So I can harvest the plant carrots in the field right afterward, be able to harvest those carrots probably around November, and then plant wheat again in that field. Yeah. Yeah. So plant carrots, harvest carrots, plant wheat, harvest wheat. I can get two crops out of that one field. Uh, that is pretty awesome. The other thing I was looking at doing too was being able to rotate my soybeans, but I'm not going to be able to rotate soybean potatoes. I could rotate soybeans and canola. Actually, no, I can't, can I? I can't do that. Oh, that would have been really great if I could have done that. I could do it with barley, uh, but I barley is a yeah, that's not going to be the crop that we need. Okay, but yeah, so carrots and wheat. I can get carrots and wheat out of this field. That would be really awesome. That's two crops. That's me constantly being able to rotate something through there. Uh, as you can see, we got some eggs loaded up here in the pickup. Uh, we've got a lot of little moving parts to do today. I got to mix up some more TMR. I need to get a couple more loads of wheat down in here for the chickens. Lots and lots going on today. Uh, you know, also the regular farmer's market pickup, all that other stuff. So uh, I guess order of battle here is we're going to get uh, the rest of the stuff with the X9 figured out. I'm going to run this load in the town, sell these eggs, uh, get my get in touch with the dairy, call them, have them send, uh, send out one of their tankers to pick up milk. And we're going to let the field dry a little bit more. Uh, I want to have that good moisture content on the wheat before I start to harvest it. So we're going to let the wheat field dry a little bit more. We'll probably come hit this in the afternoon. Uh, another thing that I'm going to need to pick up in order to plant carrots is I'm going to need myself one of these uh, special planters here. So get out here with this. Uh, you know, do some planting. I think go ahead and buy this, right? It is very narrow. It's three meter working with, uh, but we can pull it with the 6155, no issue. Uh, doesn't have a whole lot. Can't really hold a whole lot of milk. Can it? 16. 16 leaf. That might be a pain in the butt. Oh, you. 32. Uh You know what? I guess we'll try with this little guy here. I mean, because it's less than a less than a, a third of the price, fourth of the price, really. Uh, although this this one would be nicer to be able to plant more, I guess. But if we're only doing that one field, I'm fine working with a three meter working with. That's OK. All right. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to go ahead and follow our order of battle, make some phone calls, make a few runs into town. Uh, maybe I'll just go ahead sell those eggs off and then pick that up so i think what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and purchase that we'll get the air rigid buy it uh and then we'll be able to we'll be able to pick it up we'll have uh we'll have dave load it into the back of the pickup for us uh, we'll be able to use the pallet fork to pull it out when we get home um yeah so we're going to take care of animals phone calls logistics and then this afternoon we're going to go hit the wheat field and uh, also make sure that we get plenty of straw so that we can get that straw bailed up for use with the cows and the pigs. So I'm going to get these logistics done. I'll be back in a little bit, and then we get to harvesting, guys. I am stoked. It's another beautiful day here on the farm. Okay, so we can take a look at our finance uh, today and see that between milk, we made $37,000. Uh, we also sold products. That was our uh, lettuce and pineapples. Uh, had a little bit of money in water costs, which is fine. That's understandable. Uh, 
and then we made bonus three thousand four hundred and eighteen dollars that was from uh the bonus our um environmental school so uh more than paid off our twelve uh twelve thousand five hundred dollars so we're coming out of today with a with a win man of uh fifty five k this is pretty pretty awesome so we're down here on the field uh the moisture levels are looking good in the wheat so I'm going to go ahead and kind of cut a headland down here, a headland up there, and then we'll enable our straw swathing and start getting some of that straw going there. So let me go ahead, get things set here. Turned on. And we did go ahead and talk with the owner of this field. He does need some assistance with uh, harvesting it. It is oats, so we are going to have to make a change to our plates after the fact, but um, he's offering some really good money, about 30 k to do that field. So that's just money to help pay stuff off quicker, and that, that's always exciting. So we're going to kind of push this here. Let's see how we go. Yep, yep. There. Getting into it. Oh, yeah, it's a big slowdown there. Oh, we're doing good. Look at that. Just munching away. And we're honestly, we're getting pretty good yield off of this. I am pretty excited about that. The X9 has been an absolute workhorse when it comes to harvesting, man. Like I'm I'm so grateful that I could uh purchase such a piece of equipment that I could I could get this on my farm. This thing is absolutely phenomenal. I love my John Deere. My John Deere uh, equipment. It is just, it's great. It's great stuff. A little annoying when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, fixes and replacement parts and what have you, but on the whole, just lovely piece of kit for the farm. All right, we should be, should be enough turning room. Yeah, look at, I mean, this thing just turns on, on, on a quarter. I I wouldn't say a dime. It's not that tight, but it can turn on a quarter. <laughs> it can turn on a half dollar. <laughs> so that's not bad. Uh, two and a half liters on just that little strip here. I believe we got a. Uh, I believe our our header's working with is about uh twelve meters, or it might be ten and a half meters. So that that's pretty good. The with the length of this uh, with the length of this field. Ding. Uh, with the length of this field, there's uh, there's a lot here to harvest. So I'm going to go ahead, headland this other little area, and then we'll just kind of time lapse out the, the harvest.
all right guys we are doing great so we just got the field finished up here um you know got all that stuff sold off things are just going things are going phenomenal today we are we're doing really good uh we already oh we already got weeds growing we're gonna have to do something about that um yeah let's go grab this truck so we had to do an offload we we filled the truck to max capacity so we had 79 uh we had 79 thousand uh liters of wheat already in our silos and we'll go ahead and grab this and then i will remember to reset the data for the field i will remember to do that i just need to uh bail all this hay off of the field and then i need to till the field i'm going to shallow shallow disc the field and then plant it with carrots and just, uh well what i'm probably going to do is i'm going to come spread manure then shallow disc the field uh to help kind of work the manure into the soil then come plant the carrots so a lot of moving parts still left to go for the rest of this month in addition to harvesting uh our neighbor's oat fields which means i need to get the x9 down here into the workshop uh make the plate modifications that i need to make and then start working that field Oh boy. Yeah, I might have bitten off a little more than I can chew, but I think I'm gonna be okay. I think I'm gonna be fine. Uh da -da -da. go ahead and dump this off. And then I actually grabbed uh a bucket full of wheat to go ahead and dump in. I'm gonna just go ahead actually this guy here for now. I'm not gonna need it until we start working the neighbor's field. And I've still got plenty of stuff to do between now and then. Uh, I did grab myself a bucket. Uh, here's here's the carrot planter. I actually had to go grab the the sixty one fifty five and take it to the uh, to the field or to the wow to the dealership. Uh, let's go ahead and feed these guys. Get a little more seed in for them. And so they should be well set now. Yeah, they've got food. They have enough food for about three months. So I'm not too terribly worried about that. I'll just go ahead and cut this off. And yeah, so. Oh, wait. No, oh, I'm going to go pull this up. I got to go grab the baler. <laughs> what am I thinking? I'm going to go grab the baler and we're going to see how many of those various uh, straw bales that we can get bailed up there. I'm pretty, pretty pumped about that. I do need to make another batch of TMR for the cattle. Uh, they got about two months worth of feed right now, but we're going to go ahead and we're just going to batch up a little bit more for them. And actually, I don't think I need to have my, my front loader right now. So quick, we're just going to I'm gonna drop this guy. You can just sit here and then take the front loader here, ye old front loader. A lot of, uh, it's like an 8,000 point turn right there. <laughs> I just did. Uh, we're gonna drop the front loader and then grab the baler, go bail that straw, get the X9 off the field. Uh, just so many little moving parts right now. We'll come back up here with the man truck, grab that bale trailer. All right. Yes, this is going to be great. And then before, let me go ahead and set my bale counter. So we ended up getting 29 bales total from our grass field. Pretty pretty awesome so i reset the counter on the baler so we can figure out how many straw bales we're going to end up with my hope is that we end up with like 20 20 would be a good number uh but i I'm, i don't know and i'm i'm not really you know it's not going to be a big deal if there's less well it might maybe be a little bit of a deal if there's less but uh cuz we are going to need we need straw for so many things we need straw for the cattle uh for bedding we need straw 
for TMR mixing. We're going to need straw for the pigs. Uh, so there are a few things that we're going to need straw for. Go ahead, get that pulled back in. Then go ahead and close up. Get everything folded down and in. Are. Okay, and we're just going to go ahead and get pulled off of the field here, just out of the way. And actually, we'll just go ahead and pull ourselves over towards our neighbor's field here. And then we'll, we'll cut headlands and stuff in. Once we get all of our other stuff done, so we'll just come down here to the neighbor's field. Yeah, I'm definitely going to want to headland against my corn crop, which, by the way, uh, we'll kind of get down and get a little bit of a closer view. Guys, the corn is looking great. It is looking super fantastic. Um, yeah, so I think right here is just fine. We'll kind of go ahead and leave this to sit right here for now. Uh, corn, let's head down this... Uh, firm here look at it it is coming in beautiful uh some of these stalks looking nice and tall this is growing great absolutely great we're gonna get such a good yield off of this and uh yeah so part of the reason why i took this contract to work on this field over here is just to kind of continue to build up my money because i do need to buy a corn header we don't have a corn header right now i'm gonna need to get one and so, uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty expensive. The one I was looking at is going to run about $84,000. Uh, but I feel like there's going to be a huge return on investment with that. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm going to go ahead. Man, look at this. This looks great. We got nice and harvested here. Uh, I do I need to spread some pH. So I'm probably going to go ahead and do a mixture of things. I'm probably going to go ahead, spread slurry and pH on this field, then disc it, then get those carrots planted. So, uh, but before I can do any of that, I need to get this baling done, and I need to get this baling done before it starts raining. Uh, we might have to, yeah, okay. I'm going to get the baling done, and then we'll come back. I'll come back uh, for for disking, and then we will... Uh, go from there to planting that uh planting those carrots so i will catch you guys here in a few Okay, man, that took a lot. This uh this is taking a lot longer than I thought it was going to. I mean, we've uh so in total there's 30 rows with this little uh this little 3 meter this little 3 meter planter, but uh I have learned one thing and that one thing is that we 
pull up our, our PDF here, or not our PDF, but uh, we pull up our PDA here, uh, you can see that seeds one, uh, not this field, this field, 35 liters of seed. I spent $31 on seed to plant this field, which is absolutely ridiculous. That is such a small amount compared to some of the other fields. It is crazy. What also is crazy is how absolutely filthy the 6155 is. I mean, it that itself is a little dirty. The tractor is absolutely filthy. Uh, it is so, we're gonna be having ourselves a hot, a hot steamy date tonight with the power washer because damn uh but yeah if we go ahead and pop back in here we'll see uh i cut it off after we uh got the field cleared and everything so um got lime on the field we put some slurry on the field and that was a mistake and i'll show you why here in a moment uh fuel vehicle maintenance all this other stuff uh yeah we're at negative 8k on the field right now and it's gonna be going up even more and i'll explain why here as soon as i get this last little bit finished uh kind of bummed out about this one but it's one of those you know learning things and pop this guy up we'll hop out of the tractor look at look at this look how filthy it is absolutely disgusting so uh i i limed and slurried this field uh the liming was fine if you see here we have uh ph values this is perfect here on the field for carrots uh nitrogen is bad nitrogen is bad uh across the whole field and i put slurry on the field uh i'm thinking what happened is that the slurry value didn't take because there was no seed on the field so i spent sixty thousand slurry on this field and there's only a few tiny spots if we come here and we look um we should be at a 200 and as you can see we are at best we're at 100 in some areas um and the rest of it is really not good where we already there yeah we, we should be kind of closer to 200 uh or 140 140 is what we should be at 140 is where we should be and aside from this little bit here uh everything is way under so we are not going to be getting the kind of yield that we're going to be looking for now i have the hard decision of trying to figure out whether or not i want to uh try to do something about that or not uh whether or not i want to run uh manure or something over the field slurry or something over the field I do need to get a go and pick up a hoe. So now I'm kind of mad at myself because if you remember a few a uh, few months back, I actually sold uh, the chop star that we had. Uh, I sold it because we were doing all this no till. There was no need for me to do any sort of. Uh, there was no need for me to do any sort of. Actually, take you over up here to this spray, uh, uh, this pressure washer. I didn't need to do any sort of, um, and any sort of weed control. Didn't need to. Uh, but now, good turn there, Mister Deer. Now, uh, because I am, I, I don't have the capability of uh, direct seeding, uh, no-till seeding in the, um, the the carrots. Now I have to do something about the field. So. Uh, yeah, a few things over here are kind of dirty, actually. Let's take a moment, kind of clean some of our gear off. So now, uh, because that is the case, that uh, we're basically, we're going to have to go pick up, <laughs> we're going to have to go pick up, I think what we're going to do is see about, I don't want to know, I'll have to look at my financials. I need to look at my financials and figure out what I'm going to do, because I believe getting that chop star that we need, I believe that uh dave said those are retailing around 50 around the 50k mark i think like 50 52 53,000 dollars can i afford it right now yeah would that really suck to have to spend all my money on that yeah do i want to take out another bank loan no but now it's just a little frustrating because if i don't weed the field if i don't do that then i'm going to end up with a lot of I'm gonna end up with a lot of weeds. Those are going to affect my crop growth negatively. 
I don't want to deal with that. It's just a whole pain in the butt. But I also don't want to spend a ton of money. I might make a few calls around and see if I can't like uh maybe borrow uh borrow a weeder from somebody. But just just you know, just to knock the field out until next year when I will obviously go ahead and buy a dedicated weeder if I want to keep doing carrots. I actually I want to see what uh what that's gonna look like in the long run. I want to see uh, how much money we'll be making if we if we decide to do carrots as a good as a continuing crop in between. So the other thing that I had noticed is that uh, when I had I I sold my planter or not my planter my cedar, uh, so I'm gonna have to get another cedar for planting wheat crops come this next uh, this next season. So. It's just a whole mess. It's a whole mess. It's a hot mess express, and I've got nobody to blame but myself. Uh, just not paying attention to things. So, anyway, uh, I'm gonna make a few phone calls, see if I can't get uh, somebody to lend me their uh, their weeder, and then I need to get out there onto field eight. And I was waiting for the oats to kind of dry a little bit. Uh, we we had a little bit of rain yesterday. The humidity was up, but we've had beautiful sunshine all morning and afternoon since like seven o'clock this morning. So we should be good. We should be okay. Uh, to get out to that field and start cutting our headlands and start harvesting that oats. Uh, but yeah, I will uh, go make some phone calls and I will catch up with you guys in a short while. All right, guys. So uh, we got all of that work done last month and it's August now. So we got that big oat field taken care of, but now we have a lot of TLC to put on the X9 here. Uh, definitely got to get it cleaned up, oil points checked, plates checked, all the things that I need to do. I got to swap out uh, like our filter plates in there to get ready for corn harvesting. There's definitely some of these uh, tines and chopper blades here on the scraper header that's got to get uh, taken care of. But... It is time to harvest potatoes. Oh, our corn's coming in really nice, too. Look at that. Man, that's looking gorgeous. Uh, I already have the harvester truck down on the field. I just need to hop into the uh, semi-truck here and hook up to the semi-trailer. All right. Get this out there. So the X9 needs to be taken care of, and we'll get that done this month. Also, I think something else we might look at is carrots. The carrots are coming in nicely. They look good. I got some eggs over there to run into town. Uh, I'll see if I can't schedule pickup for those when uh, the farmer's market truck comes to pick up the produce from the greenhouses. Get that. Yeah, that's looking real nice there. That's looking pretty nice, that. I'm just going to go ahead and get the truck out here. I'm really hoping for a good harvest on this potato field. I guess we'll find out. Uh, but, but yeah, I'm pretty optimistic. I'm, I'm fairly optimistic that we're going to have a hell of a harvest here. So I'm just going to kind of bring the truck. About, about yay. Right, meow. Kind of turn her off. Let her sit here. We have potatoes. To harvest. Get ourselves turned on here. Get our get ourselves running. And we're gonna go ahead and get our uh whatchamacallit, our uh GPS activated. So we're gonna come through here. Like we're making real good progress. Oh yeah, look at that. Should be good. Set the width on that. Yep. It's perfect. And turn that off. All right. So we are harvesting. We are harvesting. 
And we already have quite a bit of potates. Uh, harvester already. Look at that. We're already at over four cubic meters of potatoes harvested. This is going to be wild. You're going to have a lot out of this field. All right. I was uh, going to. I'm gonna. How do I want to? Let's. I guess let's try to cut a headland here. Let's harvest a headland. <laughs> All right. Man. All right. This is already looking very promising. Very, very promising. I think we're going to have more than enough uh, potatoes for pig food. All right. Yeah, this is going to be great. So let's see. Let's do, I guess, guesstimations. I'm going to say that we are probably going to get a hundred. I'm going to say we're going to get close to 100 cubic meters. I'm going to guess that we're going to get close to 100 cubic meters. 100,000 liters of potato out of the field. Just from this one strip alone, we're already at nearly 15. I really feel like we're going to get really close to that. Maybe around the 80k mark. We will find out. That is for certain. Man, just look at this, though. Just demolishing its way through. And I don't even think that we had, uh, like, perfect soil composition. All right. All right. All right, we're going to have a little bit of strippage here, but that's fine. I'm going to have to come through anyway and take care of that other section. So I think what we're going to do is I'll go ahead and time lapse some of this, and then we will take a look at the final tally for potatoes.
Okay, guys, so we are finishing up our last row, and, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was off on my numbers. I was off on my numbers, uh, pretty big. I, I guess, before you see this part, go down to the comment section and, and type in what you guess is. Uh, I guessed that it was going to be 100,000 liters. So uh, you 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 go you go type down just pause it don't you cheat pause it go type in the comments to uh, to to put your guess in because I I was off <laughs> oh um but there are some other potential contracts out there for the rest of this month there's a few other people that are paying quite handsomely. Uh, and I might uh, take up one of the larger contracts to go do, uh, especially since I'm already set uh, in this machine. Everything's good. We're topped up on fuel. Um, but there's some other contracts that are paying very handsomely right now. And that might be something that I run out and do because that, one of the contracts is paying over $100,000. It is a very large field. Uh, but that $100,000 definitely help us to buy the corn header that we're looking to get for the x9 that would also cover uh, all the repairs for the equipment on the farm presently and so there, it's really nothing but a positive uh, it's just going to be a long month a long couple weeks out there uh work in the field or well a long few days honestly all right and we are done with that we are done D U N done all right you guys got those guesstimates in we're gonna go pick up these potatoes and run them in i'm thinking that i could probably swap this field to being my wheat field and uh do potatoes in that smaller field because uh we well, well, we'll think about it. We'll look at logistics, pricing logistics and everything, uh, soil logistics. We're going to definitely have to do a lot to this field. We're going to need to till. Uh, we're going to need to fertilize lime. There's a lot of stuff that's got to get done on this field. All right. Pull up. Well, at least everything that was in the harvester. We're going to make our way down to the farm. We're gonna get that 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 final tally. This is a bit mind blowing for me, just how much we managed to harvest. But yeah, this is. <laughs> I'm not worried about feeding the pigs now. <laughs> let's just let's say that for the suspense. Still, I know I'm trying to keep keeping you guys in a lot of suspense. Um, but also while we're driving back, I just want to say thank you everybody who's been subscribing. Uh, we've been gaining a couple. A couple, two, three, four subscribers a week. To some people, that might not sound like great numbers. To me, that's awesome. Uh, it's it's just it, it feels so good every time I log on to my computer and I look at my dashboard and I see I've got one or whoa cheese and rice. Okay, um, that's a really strong fence. Uh, every time I look and I see that I've got you know one or two more people brings a smile to my face i really appreciate it and if you're watching you haven't subscribed which about 70 percent of my viewer base is not subscribed please consider subscribing it would help me out tremendously with my goal on getting to 1000 followers by the end of 2024 we're a third of the way there and i literally can't do it without you uh also if you want to help the channel out if you want to help out the algorithm that everybody you know talks about if you could leave a like and a comment, that would be phenomenal. Uh, even if it's just a like, even if you could just take take two seconds to click that like button, that means a ton. All right, so drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. Our harvested amount of potatoes, 274,804 liters. 274 thousand potatoes 
absolutely insane. Insane. Um, God, I, I don't know. Hold on. Let me see if there's any statistical data here on the PDA about that field. I don't know if I did anything for it here. It's, yeah, so. Our, uh, yeah, we've spent a lot of money on C, a lot of money on sample, money on there. Put a bunch of stuff beyond the. So yeah, it's saying that about thousand dollars off that field, but you're gonna see about fifty four k of that in our total earnings after we subtract everything from the first year of owning that field. With that said, let's actually do some quick maths uh, and look at sales data for potatoes. And three seventy four is what the top is. So we take that actually. Might actually be really close. Um, that might actually be close on the cost of. Um. Uh. Well, no. So we'll be looking at roughly if we sell at peak sales time, we're looking at over a hundred thousand dollars worth of potatoes there. Now, obviously, we're not going to be selling all of the potatoes, or even really most of the potatoes, to be honest because we are going to be feeding them to the pigs. Uh, we are, I mean, we're literally just need to harvest corn and we will be ready to bring pigs onto the farm. I could bring the pigs on now with uh, the potatoes, the soybeans and the wheat, uh, but they're not gonna be at their most optional, op optimal levels of nutrition if I go that route. And I really want them to be, you know, just strong, vibrant, and healthy right off the rip because we will be raising the pigs to uh, sell for uh, meat production. So they'll be, uh, we'll be just raising them, giving them a good life, giving them good food, and then they'll just go have their one bad day. So, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here or end our episode here. <laughs> Thank you so very much for watching. I do appreciate it greatly. I I literally wouldn't do these things uh, if it wasn't for this awesome support that I've been getting. So please keep watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. It means a ton to me. You guys mean a ton to me, even though I can't see your faces. So with that said, I hope that you have a great morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. I will catch you in the next one. Fudge Dice Roll, signing off.